So, the two series I'm showcasing today may seem completely different from each other, apart from both being in the shonen genre and being heavily influenced by Dragon Ball Z. Bleach and Fairy Tail, one of the big three of Shonen Jump and a less popular though still successful series. However, I would like to make the case of how similar they are through both their stories and productions in terms of both the manga and anime. There is a lot to unpack in terms of story, character, art, fan service, each episode's wait. Bleach is a story of high schooler Ichigo and his adventures as a soul reaper after gaining these powers from Rukia after she was injured in battle. He must battle the Hollows who are corrupted souls of deceased people while also dealing with the Soul Society and other forces including that bastard Aizen who ruined everything. I got friends on the other side. He's got friends on the other side. On the other side of the coin, Fairy Tail is a story of a magical guild of the same name in the kingdom of Fiore. Within the guilds are the characters of Natsu, the fire dragon mage, Lucy, the celestial key wielder, and other characters going on adventures to battle to both save the world and make money off the jobs. Bleach follows a monster of the week formula with the hollows for the first 15 episodes before we reach the Soul Society arc. Rukia is captured by high ranking soul reapers and Ichigo and his friends have to save her from execution by travelling to the Soul Society and battling the different captains and their lieutenants. At the end, Ichigo defeats Rukia's brother Byakuya and the true mastermind is revealed to be the good Captain Aizen. The Soul Society introduced a ton of new characters including all of the captains and their lieutenants, like Captain Hitsugaya who has the best lieutenant because two reasons. The developments of the characters through the events work well, like with Ichigo vs Zaraki. This was the highest point for Bleach through the writing combined with some great animation which is surprising considering it was done by Studio Periot. The animation, especially for the first opening, is creative through the use of framing and camera movement. Bleach had a strong advantage of introducing likeable characters that develop and have them actually contribute, which can also be said for the cast of Fairy Tail as well. Ichigo's friends and the guild are full of likeable characters like Mira Jane, Chad, Urza, Orihime, Elfman and Rukia. They all have their moments to shine, with my favourite being Elfman during Magic Games and Rukia's development within the Soul Society. Fairy Tail followed Natsu and friends on different adventures, but rather than praising the early arcs, I want to talk about the animation production. Fairy Tail was co-produced by A1 Pictures and Studio State Light and later Bridge, which I will talk about later in the video. I have mixed feelings on A1. State Light, however, worked on the excellent first season of Lock Horizon. My main point being that the animation, especially the character designs from the State Light produced parts, are better than the manga. The art from the manga of Fairy Tail isn't very good to put it lightly, like Happy's giant head, but the anime redesigns the characters to be more flexible for fight scenes with more action and comedy purposes. Usually TV anime is pretty cheap with its fight scenes as they are on a tiny budget and usually just have a lot of characters standing around having a nice chat. So through great character designs, add good storyboarding equals a well animated fight scene. An example of this would be this fight between Sasuke and Ryuko from Kill la Kill with something constantly moving in every shot to show the impact and effect of each clash. The early animation for Fairy Tail does have those moments of non-movement, but there are bursts of animation that actually impress me for a long-running shonen series that reminds me of some of the fights in both One Piece and Naruto. Bleach's character designs are more faithful to the manga and they work fine. The music for both series are awesome, though I will have to give the point to Fairy Tail. Why? Bagpipes. The use of this instrument is added to give a Celtic sound to the tracks and boost the fight scenes to new levels of awesome. Dragon's Force is the best example of this soundtrack. There is more variety in the Bleach soundtrack with different songs to punctuate scenes for more of an effect with different genres like sweeping orchestra to gospel. Price for hurting my family, you hollow scum! Speaking of which, that theme belongs to the protagonist of Bleach. Let's talk about Ichigo and Rukia. Both of them start off as likeable and cool through their dialogue and powers. You got that? Huh? I'm the rescuer here. You just shut up! What? What'd you say? Who do you think you are ordering me around like that? A rescuer isn't supposed to ignore the rescuee! Yeah? 
And what kind of rescuee complains about the rescue? Ichigo is unique in Shonen for not being a reckless, dumb warrior of power. He prefers to kick someone in the face and talk to ghosts, even before becoming a soul reaper. Rukia is the experienced soul reaper who helps Ichigo at first before being taken back to the soul society. The problem with Rukia is in order to give Ichigo her powers, she becomes powerless and can't even assist him in battle, though she gains great character development when in the soul society like her regrets in her long life. Over at the fairy tale guild lucy is one of my favorite characters in the series while i know she is unpopular with most people i like her because she's just a normal person who wants to join the fairy tale guild as it is her dream her powers through the keys are an extension of her friendship for the most part with the celestial beings then there is natsu dragneel you remember when i talked about loud shonen protagonists natsu is probably one of the biggest examples of this trope outside of son goku natsu is likable enough but the issue with him is that the plot just kept throwing power-ups at him instead of to the other characters. Transformation Central. Transformation. For some of the criticisms, let's start with fan service. Both series heavily use fan service throughout their female cast, from Mira Jane to Matsumoto. I want the big-breasted woman. Put her on. The beach episodes were rolled out halfway through both series because, of course, there are beach episodes. For Fairy Tale, the fan service gets worse during the 2014 relaunch of the series, but in the 2009 version, it is less than used sparingly until about the end of the saga and went off the rails from there. Unlike High School of the Dead, the characters actually have characters with development with arcs like Urza being a slave to one of the most powerful warriors in the guild or Rukia with her hundreds of years of experience of being a soul reaper. Then there are what I feel are the real problems with both series. After the well-built structure that could have led to greater things, instead both series become boring repeats of plots that have already been presented to the audience before. Let's talk about the original writers for both series, Taite Kubo for Bleach and Hiro Mashima for Fairy Tale. Criticizing these two writers for repeating arcs is one of the most unoriginal arguments, but it bears repeating for this video. With Bleach, the arc starts off with a female character getting kidnapped and the gang going on an adventure to save them in another world. A cute mascot character transforms into a sexy lady. Renji is defeated by everyone. Ichigo has a rivalry with an edgy rival character. While fairy tale arcs begin with the group going on a quest, they are beaten by the villains, make a friendship speech, defeat the enemies who were easily crushing them before, and Natsu punches the villain, rinse and repeat. But it isn't just the fact that both writers repeat themselves, after a certain point they both just start writing terribly. I feel that both Bleach and Fairy Tale look good to the endings of the Soul Society and Endless arcs respectively, before they both go off the rails, resulting in moments of stupidity that just ruin moments for later actual progression for characters, like Orihime screaming for Ichigo to save her after all the development in the arc with her learning about her powers and the fact that he has a hole in his chest. Also the conclusion to the battle of Lucy and Flair, are you serious? Her big moment to show her power and strength and this asshole stole it? What the hell? Another criticism I have for both series is the writer's love of introducing new characters and doing barely anything with them. With Bleach as the captains, lieutenants, Arankara, Espada and more. Fairy Tale as the several different guilds and villain factions throughout the land and sometimes dimensions. The problem with both was that the development with the characters was erratic. Instead of rotating characters between arcs, both writers would just push random characters into the spotlight and then drag them out. An example of this being some of the captains and the Strauss family who just jump in and out of the stories even though I still think Mira Jane is awesome. Those are probably with the original manga, but let's talk about some of the anime's issues post good parts. Bleach had a problem with Villa. Their entire seasons of Villa within Bleach, which is unsurprising due to Studio Perry also being behind both Naruto and Black Clover. Both of those examples being filled with Villa right after episode 1. The anime got bad with Villa after the Soul Society further dragging out an already dragged out story. Villa is cheap due to the fact that the writer can't do anything interesting or kill anyone, so there is no reason for the audience to care. Fairy Tale, on the other hand, suffers from another issue, that being its animation. You remember me talking about how Studio State Light animated the series up to episode 175 with A1 Pictures? Well, they changed the studio from State 
fight to bridge, which meant an entirely different style of animation, character designs, and fight scenes. The character designs were a downgrade because they were made to look more like the manga, and I don't like a lot of the art there. What got hit the worst was the fight scenes. They adopted the standing still and not doing anything except talking. Too much talking, 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 too much. Talking. What makes the shift in quality worse was the fact that the story was in the middle of a tournament arc and the mysteries that were finally coming to light about the dragons. In terms of filler for fairy tale, there were only two filler arcs before the studio changed. They were nothing special, but sometimes they were more entertaining than some of the canon arcs. Looking at you, Magic Games. Bleach's animation was pretty consistent until the character redesigns after the time skip. The redesigns were better than the fairy tale ones, but that's not saying anything. So time skips. Both series use them because of course they do. The Bleach time skip happened after the defeat of their big bad and was just okay with some new villains that just bored me. Fairy Tales time skip was interesting in concept with the main characters being held in suspended animation and woken up in the future. The problem was that it didn't amount to anything with the world not being changed that much instead of being a war or dystopian which could have led to more interesting arcs. You may have noticed that I've been been mentioning the main villains of both series, Aizen and Zereth, the two villains of the two series who influence and battle the heroes over their stories. Each history's greatest monster! They are both presented as competent and intelligent with their plans at first. Aizen tricked everyone in the Soul Society and assembled an army of super hollows and then just devolves into an overpowered monster who throws around the captains and whoever until he's defeated by Dusex Machina. The story took forever to actually defeat him with his method of battle being to form change and fight over and over again. Aizen was the final nail in the coffin for Bleach and he isn't even defeated in a satisfactory way. Zerus issues was the story took forever in order to just introduce him. He finally turned up halfway through and just sat around not doing much. He more influences the plot from the background which plays into his character of being a bored young man who wants to be entertained by changing the world with his power. I feel he should have confronted the team in order to both battle them and build their characters in development earlier. His power has affected the history of the world due to his immortality which has led to building its future which I felt could have played more into the series. Both villains can be summed up as disappointed with a lot of potential wasted. You may be wondering what I think of the endings of both series. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. So, how to sum up what I think of Bleach and Fairy Tale? I think my main issue with both is that they did not commit. C O M M I T T T T T T T T T T T T most shonen series experiment and play around with their ideas. For example, One Piece moved from prison to war to merfolk to mad scientist arcs. They were all unique with different characters with motivations and stories to battle. Bleach and Fairy Tale refused to change and suffered because of that. Character development was set up throughout the cast, but the writers didn't pull through, just throwing power-ups at them. I will recommend watching the early parts of both series as the arcs show the power of the potential of both series, or just something that isn't Black Clover because of the writing, jokes, animation, and of course... You know! Oh, shut up! If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content from yours truly. Also, follow my Twitter through the link in the description.